Hello! We are here with a collection of video game things that you may have never heard about before. We are here to honor the Gizmondo, which is a forgotten handheld from the mm -hmm. early 2000s. Yeah. And you might be wondering why we have all this stuff. So I worked at the PR agency that helped launch the Gizmondo. And um, when my friend left that agency, he said, I've got this whole just <laughs> stuff in my closet of like from the Gizmondo launch, do you want it? I said, sure. And I don't know anybody else who has this stuff. Yeah. So we're just gonna take a closer look at it today. This is absolutely the weirdest thing that I have in my game collection. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be giving all of this to the Video Game History Foundation yes. because they can do something better with it than we and sure can. you having it just sit in your garage, in my gathering garage. dust. So I'm glad to do a good deed, but the Gizmondo was really a little bit ahead of its time in terms of being a gaming device, but also like kind an of an entertainment thing. All in one yeah. entertainment so device. It's right there. 2005 is pre iPhone. So yeah. there was no all in one device yet at that time. And there were a lot of devices that were kind of jockeying to do that. So this could do games, movies, movies. you could do text messaging. And the big hook that what Gizmondo really wanted to emphasize is this has GPS so built into it. And there were a couple games that actually, in theory, took advantage of that, which yeah. were which are kind of a neat idea, even yeah. now, like outside of you know games on phones. Like I don't think we have dedicated gaming devices. Yeah, like the, the 3DS was not super interested in, in GPS. GPS. Yeah. Might be a bit of a privacy concern now that we think about it, but hey, <laughs> this was 2005 and the thing didn't actually work. Wild, so, wild west. So big deal. Um, this was a flop mm. in a massive way. I think worldwide around like 20 to 25,000 of these were sold. Yeah. In the United States, it was only sold at those little kiosks you find in the mall. Oh my. And there were only like less than 10 games that actually came out. The company that makes it, Tiger Telematics, went bankrupt. They spent so much money on the launch of this. They were deep in debt. Some of the people at the company were tied up in the Swedish Mafia. It came out. Uh oh. Look it up. There's a lot to it. But let's drama. Have, let's have a look at the Gizmondo. So front and back, you can see the box. There were two versions of this that came out. Mm -hmm. This is the base version. This costs like four hundred dollars. Which is really That's expensive. That's so expensive. This one says Smart Ads on it. Oh. So this is the idea of Kindles now. It has built-in ads. So yeah. again, this was kind of a good idea but it never really worked in execution and I'm not sure they ever actually even enabled that. So yeah. you could buy this for less money and get the ads um, <clears throat> and, and integrate those into whatever you were doing with yeah. the system. Ad spelled A-D-D-S. I've always wondered about that. <laughs> okay. But let's take a look at this. Let's crack it open. This one we've opened before. <clears throat> so here it is. I'll let you hold it. Oh. What do you think? It's a lot heavier than you think. So it's, it, it is hefty. It's not very big. It's not very big. It feels okay in your it hand. It feels generally ergonomic in the hand. Yeah. It has very traditional handheld of that age controls. It's got a kind of a D-pad-ish thing. Yep. Four face buttons, these big triggers. Big triggers. Which I kind of like those, honestly. Yeah, they, they don't feel bad. You can see that the face buttons, instead of like A, B, X, Y, or whatever, right. it, it literally looks like- um, Play, like stop, a, yeah, fast say forward. Yeah, remote control, almost. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. And at the top, there are these, again, kind of like you, you might see on a phone at the time, right. like go home, or you know, change the volume, volume sort of thing. Volume, brightness, so on and so forth, yeah. Right. It camera? Also, Camera right there. I think this was like a point six millimeter camera, point, point three six. megapixel, like a really small megapixel. But again, two thousand five. Parents, yeah. Maybe it was fine. Yep. The other thing I've always noticed about this is the texture. Yeah, it's the grippy. It's, it's grippy. I kind of like it, but I've heard people who've used it more than me, which is not, which is never, talk about how <laughs> it kind of like starts to like melt off over oh. time. So that's probably not the best. Yeah, yeah, it does kind of feel like sticky so that you right. don't feel like it, you're gonna drop it, which is nice, right. but mm, I don't know. This ran a version of Windows, so you could connect it just straight to your oh. PC and do some stuff there. This is the SD card port where the games went. The games were just SD cards with the, the, the games loaded on them. I see. They were not trying to come up with anything custom the there. New cut, no custom cartridges or anything like that. And you got a, a headphone jack there. Yeah, if you open this up, behind the battery, like you could eventually get like a SIM card in there, which you would need for the GPS, the GPS tracking and, yeah. and all of that good stuff. Um, 
you know, various cables, headphones. Oh, these are the cheapest, yeah. crappiest headphones I've probably, ever held. Probably, probably don't want to use those. Branded Gizmondo though. Yeah, there was a reason why the Gizmondo was not a smash hit. So why don't we look at some of the games? Yeah. Because again, this is like, I said there were about less than 10 games released in the US. Yeah. Had more than this. And these were what we were pulling from to send to the media. Mm -hmm. So some of these are European games. Some more games came out in Europe. Some of these other ones, like, they look like they may have been like early press copies. I don't know for sure. But it's not the best yeah. quality. Colors, this was a game that, that we talked about a lot when we were trying to play out the capabilities of the system is basically like gang wars, mm. but it was using the GPS to like take turf. Oh, so, that's a clever use of something that was like unique to the hardware at least. Right, it's not a bad idea, but you know, it it obviously didn't, didn't work out. Uh, but this was the one that they were quite proud of and played up what yeah. the Gizmondo was about the most. Okay. So you might think, oh boy, this was such a bust. Um, you know, I'm sure these games were all just no-name nothings. Not the case. There was like pretty legit support from Electronic Arts. So here we have FIFA 2005. And yeah. here we have SSX3, the snowboarding game. Uh, obviously FIFA is like it's EA's huge. biggest, biggest and franchise. And if this is like, a, you know, launching in Europe, that would be super yeah. popular there. They're not, I mean, they're not shy about putting FIFA on anything and everything, but it does no. take, it does take some resources. Like somebody had to make that deal at Gizmondo to make this happen. Right. So I would love to know how that all went down. Yeah. Oh, sealed Yeah, these copy. are sealed. Don't you dare touch sealed these. Sealed copy right. of FIFA for Gizmondo. Yeah. Who, who would have that? And Nobody. you see, these have the Peggy ratings yeah. because these did not come out. Uh, in the United wow, States. How interesting. Right. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. There's some of these that have like really sketchy names and kind sticky of balls? thematics. We have sticky balls. Entertaining, and engrossing, pocket, addictive. Pocket, pocket ping pong. With a very I interesting mean, choice of pocket artwork. Pocket ping pong, maybe you could explain away, but it has got this uh, bikini lady on the front here. bikini lady. Let's open up sticky balls here. <laughs> oh, here we have a manual. Oh, and then see here. Look, you, this came with a case for your other. Oh yeah, it's just a little SD card Gizmondo. case. You can put it all in there. <laughs> That's strange. I like the description for pocket ping pong though. What does it say? Pocket ping pong 2005 is a pure fun in the sun where beachwear babes battle to the top table tennis league to keep their fans totally tasty. Choose one of six sexy characters, each with a special shot and you'll be pushing their buttons all day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So you oh can no. you can get a better look at sticky balls here like this <laughs> game looks like it looks it looks like Super Monkey Ball. It doesn't yeah. look terrible. Like the the hardware itself was pretty capable and you know what it could do at the time was pretty much in line with you know what you might see on on any other handheld. It was just the price point and yeah. the bizarre backstory of this thing. And it must obviously, be so hard to to break into the right. hardware market if you're not like the Sony Nintendo world. Right, but there was a feeling Microsoft. that oh, Nintendo is weak, and Sony kind of had this narrative of you know there's a big market beyond kids for handhelds. Yeah. So I think a lot of companies like this tried to get in, and obviously nobody could do it, and you know Nintendo's still doing it the best. Last game, this isn't even a game. This is a tool. This is the Gizmondo Navigator Co-Pilot 2006. So everybody's got GPS yeah. in their car now. You could just use this. Oh um, yeah, it basically like looks an like, old, GPS. like old school GPS that we used to have on our computers. Right. MapQuest days. So this is the Western US version covering you know, basically California through like Utah. Yeah. Hawaii's on there. Great. And let's take a look at this. I don't know if they ever put out a proper, oh. whoops, what's this? Oh, we found some. Why are there so many SD cards? So. Kiosk demo Somebody, card. yeah, I'll let. Oh, I'll these let, are all demos. I'll let the Video Game History Foundation go through these. So yeah, it says demo kiosk card. I can do anything, that was the tagline. And then there is the one for the co-pilot. And then there's just this, these two blank unbranded SD cards. I'll just keep those in here. Uh, <gasps> oh no. 
And yeah, it, it really does just look, do you remember back in the day when we used to have like, what is it, Garmin? Yeah. Was like the handheld sure. GPS before everyone had it on their phones. Right. This just looks like one of those, which is so interesting that back in 2005. 2005 was a really weird time because we were yeah. on the cusp of all these things that we take for granted now that yeah. have just become life staples. Exactly. And there was just a lot of people kind of scratching their way to try and- Break in. Make theirs yeah. be the big version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some made it like the iPhone and some didn't. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So again, like that, that's my takeaway of this is like there were some thoughtful ideas here, but right. they were just done really poorly. And obviously the company was mismanaged and yeah. people went to jail. Uh, there, was jail. A, there was a Ferrari that was crashed famously. So oh my. yeah, the legacy of the Gizmondo so. is strange. Imagine a world where instead of iPhones, it was Gizmondos. Oh my God. And so we would all be using Gizmondos today. <laughs> I to wouldn't do be here everything. today. <laughs> What do you think that world would be like? Isn't it, isn't it fascinating to imagine the when paths are diverging? There you go. Check it what out. What do you think? Gizmondo, do you have one? I'd be very surprised Don't if you did. Don't think you do. If you do, tell us, because I want to know who you are. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.